Wait till I tell you about this panel. <laughs> I've done some deep research on our panel members because it's not enough to just know they run a cultural district. I'm proud to present to you a scientist, a member of a rock band, and a commercial limo driver who is very immature. <laughs> Guess which one that is. <laughs> Um, Lisa, I don't, I don't have a fun fact about Lisa because we like to have dignity and decorum at the Mass Cultural <laughs> Council whenever so possible. So much on a daily basis. <laughs> um, but I'm so happy Michelle. Michelle is here from Rockport, is part of our panel. Uh, Jeff from Maynard and Andrea from Arlington. And by the way, the rock band is called The Hard Covers and it's a library band. <laughs> You want to have one, don't you? You want one of those in your own community. Uh, but while our panel is having a conversation facilitated by Lisa, please say hello to John Vo. Hi, John. He is a painter uh, and runs a gallery here in Worcester. And if you hadn't had a chance to take a look at some of his work uh, that has now been that is Luis talking about tweeting. Is that pretty amazing? I mean, it really looks like Luis. That is so cool. Wow. So John is going to be painting. And what did I say if you came back? We could win it. You could win it. And you, I did say money. I said money and I said win. I said a lot of things. But um, John is doing paintings and he has generously agreed to uh, allow our winner to, oh to um, have one. So with that, I'll give you this kind of very strange microphone to... We have one right here. We have Hello? one. We have one. They have one. We all have one. Yeah, there we go. Okay, well, welcome back. Um, there is coffee in the other room if you feel like you need it. Um, I don't think you will because, as Anita said, <laughs> this is an amazing panel. So step up, guys. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so basically, we have about a little less than an hour to have a conversation uh, about these cultural districts. And I want to make sure that I give time to ask some questions. So I'm just going to ask like two or three questions of them and then open it up for, for you all uh, if you have questions. But I think one of the things about the cultural district program is that most of the cultural districts sort of run uh, their operations very differently, right? So they're all managed sort of in a different way. And there's always this question, when you become a cultural district, how, how, are, we gonna, how are we gonna manage ourselves? Are we gonna be a 501c3, are we not? Or you know, how are we gonna choose our membership? Who's gonna be sort of the lead person on that cultural district? And so you know, there isn't, you know, within our guidelines, something that says you have to do it this particular way. It really is based on what's the best for that particular uh, that particular district. So we wanted to sort of start it off with hearing from each one of um, these folks to have, us tell, have them tell us how they've managed their districts and why they have felt that the way they've chosen to do that has been successful. So uh, I want to start with Jeff, uh, who is from Maynard. So do you want to just take it away? Sure. Hello? Hello. So, yeah. Jeff, I'm from Maynard. So we, yeah, we have a, a small town. We're about uh, 45 minutes outside of Boston. Um, and the cultural district was really founded by the cultural council. So they were the original drivers who got all the stakeholders together, um, got the different artists who live in town. We have Art Space, which is a wonderful middle school that was converted into studio space for artists. There's about 80 different artists there. They brought them in. They brought different folks from town in. Um, they brought uh, in the different businesses on our main street. They brought in some of the uh, property owners from the old uh, mill buildings that uh, characterize a lot of our town and its history right there and brought them all together. Uh, so when it came time to set up the governance structure, um, the cultural council themselves uh, you know, had you know, their normal duties that they do with the grant cycle every year, uh, collecting feedback, but a lot of that overlapped with the mission of the district to begin with. And so we set up a structure where the cultural council and the board, the governing board of the cultural district were the same body. And so they could conduct that business in 100% complete concert. You're not bouncing back and forth ideas. 
Um, and so that was the structure that we've done since then. Uh, and so the same rules and structures, we still follow open meeting because we're a local cultural council, uh, but it also means we're uh, linked into town a little bit more um, uh, rigorously uh, than some of our partners, and that has some advantages too. It's a small town, so a lot of people know each other, and so to have that link with town government and to bring them in with the other um, stakeholders, uh, whether it's the artists in town uh, or the business alliance has been very uh, important. Um, and so that's, that's a succinct little review of uh, our town and what we do and how we run that district. And you've found it to be successful. I mean, have kind of thought of having it run in any different way or having different stakeholders or? We, uh, we were always looking for new stakeholders and you know the individuals who are running these different institutions are made change and so we're always reaching out and keeping things fresh. Um, we, we have discussed about separating out the cultural council from the cultural district, but we're managing a limited pool of resources. And so this has been the most effective way to do that, especially to take advantage of uh, the passionate energy that we're getting from that group of people who is running it right now. Um, and if we were to uh, continue on our path of growth and keep getting more people, maybe it makes sense to spin it off for two, or maybe to set up a subcommittee sort of structure. We talked about that, but uh, right now where we are with uh, what we have, this is the most logical way to do it, uh, we feel right now. Did you go through a formal structure to, to combine the two, Jeff? They, they were never different, so the Cultural Council put in the application and really okay. spearheaded that effort. So when we were designated as the cultural district, we assumed the governing duties of the district. Thank you. And as a capacity issue, because you as a capacity issue, you still have to do all of the things that you need to do as a local cultural council around the grant cycle and all of that. So how are you managing that along with managing your district as well? We do a lot of planning. We, you know, when we take on something new, say Art Week, when that comes up, we, you know, uh, see what kind of appetite we have from the district and we really are looking for somebody, an individual on the board who can sort of spearhead that mm -hmm. um, between you know, the normal grant cycle between some of the uh, other projects that we do, such as public art in town, uh, the murals that we put up recently that I think you saw a few pictures of later, uh, or art week, or we do um, a recognition ceremony for people who are doing uh, great works in town. All of those, we generally try to find somebody on the board who can really spearhead that so that I can take care of sort of the overall organization of it, um, interacting with the Massachusetts Cultural Council and making sure all the stakeholders are uh, at least on the same page, if not moving in the same direction. So, so it's it's a bit of organization. Yes. So do you um, so you're bound by the open meeting law? Do you have subcommittees that can meet then and get, make decisions quickly without worrying about notifying all the residents? Rather than do a subcommittee, we'll we'll generally spearhead it to one person, and then they may have a volunteer pool um, that okay. may be may be on or off of. Cultural Council volunteer pools are great, um, but there's a lot of people who don't want to come to two meetings at Town Hall on the 7th block on a Thursday every night. They still want to get involved. They're great for the volunteer pool. So they can say, okay, we got our award show coming up. You know, we can sort of spearhead it from that central structure and say, you know, we're going to repeat all these elements for last year. We're going to tweak a couple of new elements. Um, and we can know exactly when a volunteer says, you know, what can I do? We have something that we can say, well, we're going to need help during these times and dates to either set up or to help book the venue or to help find a musician or to help print out certificates or to contact uh, our state rep and state senator or whatever the task may be. Uh, we have that all down so that when that one individual is given that they're sort of leading that project and they can draw on that volunteer pool to actually get the work of getting that event um, Two part question. How many members are on your cultural council and do you find that the members stay most of the time for the six year max for issues of consistency? I so I'm losing this microphone. I have only been on for three years myself, or only two of which I've been running it. Uh, so um, to answer the second part, we have had some turnover. Um, some of the members have been there since I joined. Uh, but you know, it's a small town and you have that one kind of core group of people who are volunteering, going the extra mile to do these things. So they cycle in and I know the ones who are leaving out to go join another committee or to do other great things in town. Um, they're kind of envoys for us into that group. So we can still touch on them and say, hey, we have the 
uh, 150th anniversary committee, and I know I have a few ex members on there, so when we want to coordinate something with them, that makes it easier. Uh, the first part of your question is seven. We have a group of seven. It's about the right size. Uh, it, you know, you get too bigger, and then all of a sudden the conversation gets too complicated, too smaller, you're limiting what you're able to do. Um, yep. What is the population of the majors? We're about 10,500, so between 10 and 11,000. Are you a nonprofit? We are not a nonprofit. Uh, we've talked about that, uh, but it hasn't, uh, yeah, it's something we consider, but not currently. So, Andrea, you have a bit of a different um, management of your district. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so sure. I'm not sure this is working. Can you it hear is, me? It, it, is it is working? Yes. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, so, we have a coalition of, we have 15 managing partners, but we have a core managing partnership of six. So together with the Director of Planning and Community Development, I'm the Library Director for Arlington, by the way, sorry, I forgot to mention that small detail, my full-time job. Um, so together with the, the Director of Community Planning, and, or Community Development and Planning, um, we form the, the municipal employees that are part of the core managing partnership for the district. And then beyond that, the executive director for the Chamber of Commerce, the executive director for Arlington Center for the Arts, the co-chairs of Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture, and one of the, one of the um, Capital Square Business Association business owners. Are, together we form the six person core mar managing partnership and we meet on a monthly basis. And then the larger managing partnership of 15, and there are 15 of us total, we meet on a quarterly basis to discuss business. So the executive committee of the six core managing partners, are we meet on a monthly basis and we take on projects, um, discrete projects. Um, I know a lot from talking to a lot of you, a lot of your districts do a lot of programming in the district but we are more of, um, we, we've, we're a new district. We've, we were only des designated in 2017. So we've spent the last few years um, really building up our brand and developing a brochure, which is conveniently on your chairs <laughs> for you to see. Um, so we're, we're in the business of getting that brochure out. And we are also part of a larger arts organization in Arlington called the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture. And that's really been, the commission has really been the driving force behind the cultural district and, and the driving force behind bringing all of the arts and culture um, disparate groups together in town to be one entity. So that was, par that was part of the outcome of the arts and culture planning process that we undertook with um, MAPC and a technical grant three years ago. And we find that this model is working well. Um, we're actually meeting as a core group this coming Friday morning to decide how frequently the managing partnership should be meeting and what we should be taking on in the year ahead. Because the fiscal year for us kind of just yeah, started. And how do you make that decision? Who's that core group? So you have based <coughs> on uh, people mm -hmm. who are members, mm -hmm. based on the businesses that are part of the district. And mm -hmm. then you have the six core. Who, how do you, who becomes a core member? Yeah, the six core were are part of that 15. And so um, it was important for, well, I was asked in part because the, the libraries have a lot to do with our, um, being a space for arts and culture in town, but we also are, we bookend the cultural district. So we've got e in East Arlington, the Fox Library, and in Arlington Center, the Robbins Library. Um, and then the at the time that the cultural district was being formed, um, we, I think the planning department was, didn't have a director at that time, but then when Jenny Rate, the new director, was hired, um, it was a no-brainer for her and her department to get involved in this in this cultural district uh, managing partnership, core managing partnership. And then the other members of the core managing partnership, the East, Ar it was important to have representation from East Arlington. So the East Arlington Capital Square Business Association um, was a an obvious choice, and they represent a lot of businesses in East Arlington. And then the Arlington Center for the Arts originally was located in East Arlington and since has moved to Arlington Center, but does a lot of programming in East Arlington. And so that's, that was a natural choice as well. Um, <laughs> changes. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> and then, 
And then the, the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture, that was a natural liaison relationship as well because the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture is an umbrella organization. And they, again, were the driving force behind a lot of this coalescing of arts and culture groups. We had all these disparate groups. We had Arlington Public Art, Arlington Center for the Arts, our, which is a nonprofit um, and you know, runs a summer camp and all it has a physical plant in town. Um, we had a loose coalition of freelance artists who wanted to get in on the cultural planning. We had um, ATED, the Arlington Tourism and Economic Development Group. So we had all of these people, you know, doing all good things, but we needed a we needed a coherent plan. And so the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture again came out of that arts and culture planning process that came out of a technical grant um, in order to pull all of these groups together and make a, and, and get us all working. And um, similar to Maynard, the Arlington Cultural Council, our local cultural council, is also represented on the managing partnership for the cultural district. And man, we say those words, arts and culture, and yeah, the acronyms in town are just bananas. So, you know, I'm sure you all have that equivalent. <laughs> and the cultural council comes now underneath the commission. Now. The Cultural Council is considered the grant, the fundraising right. committee within the Art Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture, and the Cultural District is still obviously recognized as a distinct um, project. However, we're represented on the commission as well. I'm a commissioner for the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture. Well, again, we don't do a, a lot of programming as a district. So um, the core managing partners, we meet again on a monthly basis, and our work has tended to be very project-oriented as far as marketing and promotion. So we did, for example, a call for ideas two years ago to um, discover ways to activate what we call lovingly the gap in Arlington, which is the space between Arlington Center and East Arlington. And it's, it doesn't have a lot going on on the streetscape. So we identified some projects that we want to look at at um, expanding in the gap. We also take advantage as a core managing partnership of the power that the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture has through funding fr directly from the town to activate the district through public art projects. But there's a hired paid curator to do public art projects in Arlington, and she has been an amazing force for um, artistic good in the town um, through, through the commission. So the day-to-day -day of the district um, is more month to month, and it's it, it really looks like a Google Drive that we share, and <laughs> and um, the we all as a core as core managing partners we all have full time commitments outside of the district, and so there we have tended to be more project focused, more like let's make a brochure this year, let's make or before that it was logo creation, you know. So. So you have one person who's actually. Well, the curator for public art projects is a paid employee, but she's not with the cultural district specifically. She is with the Commission for Arts and Culture. And that's uh, funded by, uh, by taxes by the town? Or? Yes, partially funded by the town. She is also a really good fundraiser, and so she's been able to leverage some of the funding from the town with funding from other sources, including the, the local cultural council. Um, I don't know the answer to that, but I could find out. So Arlington does the parking benefit district, right? Uh, y yes. And does the all those are does this umbrella receive any of those funds or? That may happen. I am not very involved in the parking committee. Um, that's a whole other kettle of fish, as they say. Uh, but par yeah, parking meters were just introduced in the center of town a few years ago, and so there is a parking meter, uh, or there's a parking revenue um, fund, but I think, and I think part of that is to enhance the area in downtown where the, where the paid parking is, but I, I don't know exactly how that's parsed out. Do you have guiding documents? Yes, we have a, <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, like, you know, as people are coming on boarding, I mean, the LCC sort of follows the guidelines, and, you know, um, and then, yeah. But I'm sure also guiding documents. But I'm just yeah. thinking that you must have put together, you're not mm -hmm. a 5123, you're 
Or right. So we chose. So as I recall, with the application process, there was a, a fork in the road where it, you could be a 501c3 as a managing partnership, or you could include members of the municipal government and form a partnership that way. So we chose that path, and we have a managing par partner agreement, which I'd be happy to share, and we have um, you know a shared Google Drive that has a number of foundation documents in it. And when we ha we have the opportunity to vote in a new managing partner at each quarterly meeting. And so that's how we have sort of brought in new people. And when we bring in new partners, and the partners represent organizations. They're not individuals. They represent businesses or organizations. So um, we show them you know, the tools that they need to help promote the district when they become a managing partner. Misha Lockwood, <laughs> it's a little bit different as well. Um, and um, so can you just talk about sort of, you have these monthly, you have monthly meetings, so everyone's sort of welcome at those, but you have subcommittees and you have that are sort of the structure that helps manage the work that you do in your district. Yes, so uh, to answer some of the people's questions, I am an employee of the town. So I originally was brought on as the um, director of community engagement for the town. The town had um, an agency that used to do all of their marketing and PR, and the town decided that they wanted someone in-house on the floor that could be a conduit between town hall and the businesses. So that's how my position was started. Um, shortly thereafter, um, the person who spearheaded the founding of our cultural district had other things that she wanted to be able to spend time on, so she um, gracefully handed over her responsibilities because the cultural district fell under me as the community engagement director for the town. So the cultural district was my responsibility anyway. Um, so my position is two part-time positions still equal to part-time. Um, we, <laughs> um, <laughs> we, for lots of reasons. Um, so, so I have multiple things that have that very much overlap. Um, and the short of it is, because I work for the town, I cannot only do certain businesses or certain. I have to represent all. So everyone has to be involved. Everyone has to be included. Um, and so that um, that is a joy and it's a blessing, <laughs> it's a blessing and, and and a curse all together um, but it's also very important for in Rockport we are um, a, a cultural um, um, we are a destination we're the best destination we're the end of the line they saved the best for last um, uh, no, a colony. So we have our art colony that is constantly evolving and changing to meet uh, the needs of the artists that come in. So it's it's a lot of fun to meet and 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 understand the stories of each and every unique person that is within Rockport. So everyone's invited to the cultural district meetings and what's going on. Or there there must be a group core group of people who are making the decisions about. <coughs> direction that the district is taking? Uh, so there is a core group that comes to the meetings, but um, I also recognize that there are certain people who are not comfortable with coming to those meetings. And so I really try to get out there and, and speak to each person and know the businesses. So I know which artists are not comfortable coming to meetings. I know which ones are. I know who wants their voice heard, and I know who doesn't. Um, so I very much try to, to get out and be personable with the people. Now maybe I can do that because Rockport is small, um, but I really try to understand each person's story and what each person is trying to get at so that when we are doing events, even if each program or each event doesn't fit their particular need, they are understanding why we're doing it and recognizing that what they need will be addressed in, in other things. So we really, Rockport is extremely volunteer driven, extremely, um, if, if it wasn't for my volunteers, there would be nothing, nothing in Rockport. 
Um, and so I very much appreciate them, very thankful for them, and try to make sure that they feel appreciated. And um, so that's who guides the, the decisions. So we have the Makers Festival. We, we have all of these different groups and organizations. Um, if I had to count all my volunteers, I really don't know how many I'd have. Uh, I was pointing. Oh, okay, go ahead. Okay. You're good. Uh, Rockport doesn't have a chamber of commerce. So there is a chamber of commerce, and we do work in partnership with the chamber. It is a Cape Ann chamber. It is not. Um, there is a Rockport division of the chamber, um, and um, and the cultural district was formed by by the local artists and businesses in within the district to okay. to address certain things. And then a follow up to that. Uh, the, how do you deal with the hospitality end since they're not part of the creative process, but they're a major benefactor of the creative process? So I would stop you there <laughs> and remind you to be extremely sensitive because hospitality is very creative. So that w so I apologize if I'm too snarky. Um, but we did give the disclosure that I am immature and I do lack social. Um, so, so in Rockport, the majority of our inns is the hospitality industry. So we have inns, we have restaurants. Our restaurants, you know, if you talk to uh, Kelly or Sue from Art Week, They'll tell you that there's art and food. There's there's art in all things, and I think we need to be sensitive and aware of these people are creatives. Um, so I, I yeah. okay. so for example, one of my inns, the reason why she's an inn owner is because she's a chef by trade, and she wanted to be able to bring her culinary gift to a different level. And so she considers her breakfasts that she makes every day from scratch for these people. If you saw her breakfasts, she'd understand. But that's her way of being art and being able to be present. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, sort of your role and responsibilities, not just within Rockport or the cultural district, but in connecting it to other Cape Ann communities and efforts? It's Um, so my role for the town of Rockport is to be a partner, not just within Rockport, but all of Cape Ann and Massachusetts. So I have, you know, thankfully there's a many amazing people. So we have Elizabeth Carey from Discover Gloucester, who is an amazing gift to our community, who is from the tourism industry. We have um, Peter Weber and Ken Reel, who are with the Chamber of Commerce, who bring all this different wealth. So we're really lucky in the fact that we have these, these people in key places, and we all have different gifts that we leverage with one another. We have Anne-Marie Casey with North of Boston. Uh, she's North of Boston Convention, CVB, which is, so it's the regional tourism. Um, you know, we have a new, for those of you who aren't, um, familiar Mass Office of Travel and Tourism has a new executive director who's fabulous. If you haven't met her yet, um, she's extremely um, friendly and welcoming. So, so thank you, Sue, for actually asking that question <laughs> because it's a question that I wanted to ask, and, and I'm just wondering for you out there how many of you are connected to your regional tourism council or, or connected to tourism, and for both you, Andrea, is that like how how do you work with tourism? How important is is tourism and working with tourism and collaborating and partnering with you know that sort of segment um, to the sustainability and the work that you're doing in the district? Um, well, I think I mean a large point of of course having a district is to, is to promote the town to the region and the areas surrounding. I mean, a lot of work in Arlington has been done around the Battle Road. Mm -hmm. And so w one of the things we've been, th we were thinking about in creating this brochure, which if, if you want to coalesce your district, a brochure will really do it <laughs> as far as 
focusing you on, you know, what what is it that's special about your town? What, I mean, obviously you ha you know all of the assets that you want to be promoting, but in terms of being connected to the tourism, I think we're just starting to recognize where those opportunities are as we try to get this brochure out to where it needs to go. So there's a new development. Um, huge housing um, development that was just built at near Alewife. And so a lot of what we're talking about is, okay, how do we connect with the property manager there, get the get these, you know, brochures into the different new occupants. Um, working with the Chamber of Commerce has been really important, but um, and working with the new the realtors in town to get the brochures into their hands so that new homeowners can understand Arlington a little bit better. Um, but I think we could do a lot more with connecting to the state. And I mean, it's exciting to know that there's a new executive director with mass tourism. So I would love to, we would love to find a way to make more use of that. Well, and, and Art Week might be a conduit for mm. many people to be able to start connecting those dots. Because we all need to understand that there's only so much bandwidth that we have and so much that we can do in a day. And we need to have a little grace and forgiveness among ourselves. You know, we often want to get everything done. Art Week has created the way to connect restaurants and, and inns or hotels in ways that we may not have done it before. They're being very intentional with how do we invite them, how do we connect them, and so that could also be, you know, an, an avenue for that. So it's very important, it's something that we're working on. I, I kind of, you know, view it as there's a lot of individual organizations around town who are moving in a forward direction, but not say the same forward direction to getting all those people to align and coordinate. And so, you know, a lot of our tourist draws that we do have, and it's not huge, but um, we're trying to increase that, um, are for say events such as when we have the art space and they have open studios, and that's a great draw for outside of town, or it's for, we have a small uh, classic theater and they often do film festivals and getting um, the draw in. Uh, and so I think what we're starting to do now is trying to connect that. When you come into that theater, well, do you know about the open studios that's happening next week? When you come to open studios, are you getting a flyer for the film festival that's happening next month? When you go to both of those things, are you getting a map of the downtown that has all of our fabulous <laughs> restaurants listed in it? Um, and this is a work in progress right now. So it's very important. It's something that we're thinking about. It's something that we've done some good work on, but there's still a lot of work to go. Um, and then we can connect that to all the different shops downtown. We made a business alliance, and you know we're all in agreement. Um, but then there's just putting pen to paper and getting it done. So um, prioritizing those along with our other projects has been the main challenge. And is, is Maynard seasonal or year round? We we are a little bit more year round. Especially we'll have for our we just had our open studio in art space uh, last weekend, and we'll have in December another one. Um, for a holiday sale, basically, and then we'll have one in the spring, um, but we'll have, uh, sometimes we try to do an event uh, in uh, closer into the winter when we do our, our award show, just because that's the time when there's not as many other events, so we can, you know, spark up a little energy in the middle of February when, let's be frank, New England needs a little bit more energy right there, so it gives something, uh, people an opportunity to come together and celebrate something uh, uh, in, in February. Um, so, you know, there's seasonality for all of us, but I don't think in Maynard it's as great as, say, Rockport, so. Do any of you work with other cultural districts? Uh, Berkshire County has five going north-south. So is there any partnership that you found particularly helpful? So I'll, I'll say we don't regularly work, but one of the first things I did when taking over uh, the Maynard Cultural District is I called up uh, the head administrator from the Natick Cultural District, and she was very nice. and gave me a one hour talk about their structure. So if you're starting out, look around you, uh, make a connection, maybe find uh, somebody from a town who's about the same population or history or that kind of mirrors you. If you don't know where that is, talk to, talk to the Massachusetts Cultural Council, they can help link you up. Um, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, you, can, you can take a lot of the great ideas and that's literally the point of this panel right here. So um, if you're just starting out, you know, reach out. Um, but we, we don't directly coordinate because uh, there's, you know, geography of several towns in between us. Um, so we, we normally go alone for our events and structures. And we just learned that Winchester is a cultural district now, so maybe we'll partner with Winchester. Who knows? Um, I think one of the interesting things, too, with all of the districts is that your focuses are different, right? So 
Um, and how, and so can you talk, just talk a little bit about that really briefly, about, you know, your sort of, Arlington sort of focus on the built environment, and, and, um, and you both are somewhat focused on, you know, programming, and that's sort of what is sustaining your, your district, and how you've made that decision, that this is what, this is how we're going to run our district, this is what we're going to focus on. So, can you just talk a little bit about why that you've decided to focus on that, and um, sort of, does it, does it feel sustainable to you? When you're talking about we're doing this program, we're doing this festival, then we're doing this, then we're doing that. I don't know. It seems a little like that's a lot, and that, but yet it's a very, they're very successful in the work that you're doing. So, so, f so for me, a lot of things were in place before I got started from the people who were there before me, and then I followed. Um, and again, it comes back to my volunteers. Your, your volunteer, for me, my volunteers are my driving force. So. Um, I can be a very black and white person, so I'm big on numbers, on, on what is our return, why are we doing it. Like, I need to have all of those answers because I answer to the Board of Selectmen, and I need to be able to, um, to answer to them and say, why are we doing certain things? Um, and maybe because I do have time from the town, I am able to support my volunteers when we're doing programming and festivals and things of that. And... Um, and the majority of my festivals are co-produced. It's the cultural district co-producing it with other groups. So this way, um, I can handle what I'm good at, they handle what they're good at, and we find that working relationship so that it's not gonna be burdensome for any one organization. Uh, the walking tours was probably one of the, is probably one of the most, um, burdensome it's not the correct word but it's it's the most time consuming it's the most effort is is the walking tour that is run by volunteers this summer i was able to i got a grant to get an intern in there to be able to kind of structure the walking tours a little bit um and so maybe it's because i have time to do it um but i i follow where things lead so last year we added a, a makers festival in december that, um, that brought thousands of people from around the world to come for the weekend. And when we went with Elizabeth Carey, the Chamber of Commerce in north of Boston, we went to the New York Times Travel Show this past winter. And from being at the travel show and meeting people, they really are looking for those reasons to go away somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so um, we were able to show them, you know, when to come to Rockport. And those are our things so that they're coming for full weekends, ex meeting, experiencing, falling in love with. Um, I would say for Arlington, um, again, you referenced the built environment. That's been really important for us to look at because we, for a variety of reasons, we got um, funding for public art. Um, one was through a bar grant or a bar, bar foundation grant um, that had that was connected to our bus rapid transit um, pilot, and so when looking at ways to, when the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture was looking at ways to leverage that grant and ma really make use of it, um, we saw a perfect synergy in activating the district. So um, because we had this, um, this gap between East Arlington and Arlington Center, the bus um, depots became like this wonderful focal point for public art. And so um, again, the curator for, for public art in Arlington helped um, do a call for um, artists to sort of create art in these bus depot, bus shelters, I should say. Um, and so that was, uh, it was a temporary project, but it was really well received. And it also kind of, it, it put Arlington's eyes on public art in a new way. And so I think as the town appreciates the public art that's been popping up around through the pathways, um, Art on the bikeway. We did. Uh, um, there was a yarn. Uh, it wasn't yarn bombing, but it was wrapping trees on the walkway, the, the Minuteman bikeway, rather. And um, that was another project that came out of this support, town support, and grant support for public art. And so we've been working with. We don't have a way to kind of um, install a lot of art along Mass Ave, but it's easy with the with the trees as armature, as our <laughs> curator would say, the trees are armature, um, to activate the bikeway. And um, there was another um, uh, 
project involving haiku on the bikeway. So stenciling haiku, and that became a project that was a synergy between the poet laureate in town, the um, public art, uh, the Arlington Public Art, and the commission. So that, uh, again, it was through these liaisons and partner, partner organizations around the district that we were able to highlight the district and it was it, it's always been this like sort of win-win that happens with with partner organizations um, that are already moving in that direction so and I'm hearing that a lot I've been hearing that all day is that you know all of the all of these towns and cities have organizations that are moving in the same direction and then all of a sudden there's this organizing principle of the district or you know a similar kind of organization but the district has been a wonderful way to to crystallize those efforts. So anyway, I feel like I got a little off track there. Yeah. Yes, uh, so for us, um, <laughs> there's a lot of vision to what um, you know everybody in a small community wants to see for their community. And a lot of people will come to us with uh, a whole variety of ideas. And for us, it's just taking, you know, we can't do everything. We can't say yes to everything. So saying here's you know, the ones that we're going to take on and focus on ourselves that we know we can accomplish. Here's the one where we're gonna say, you know, um, that's great. We can help you in the following ways. We can't take ownership of it, but we can either provide a small amount of seed funding, or we can help you out with PR, or we can connect you to somebody uh, either in town hall who might know the, the process and help guide you through that. Or there's gonna be things where that's great. If you have the energy to do it, um, great. But we wanna we wanna you know workshop it, see who the audience is for. Does this make sense? And we consider all the aspects of it. So really, it's just sort of having a really efficient you know sharp head of you know, when somebody comes with this idea, what can we do with it? How does it fit in the overall structure? Um, so that when you're having a district, everything, you know, fits, right? It's going to be part of the same vision as opposed to um, just layering on one, you know, next drive, let's go run over here, let's run over here. So, you know, getting some, I, I'd rather have a couple of high quality things that we're able to do rather than, you know, three times as many half quality things that we can do. So just having the discipline of, you know, knowing what your mission is and making sure when people come, you know, they recognize what you're doing everything. Luis, I see you have your hand up. Yeah, I was trying to make, or I answered it, so but. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, but. Sorry. So, <laughs> in the sense that, so we have some LCCs, local cultural councils, where the immediate community might not necessarily know a lot about them. What they do, like you say, local cultural council is that. Um, and there's a small group that make actually, you know, use the funding or you know, apply for the funding. And so I'm getting the sense that your local cultural council, as a local cultural council, but also as manager of this district, like your your brand is, if anything, is elevated. Like people know about you. They know the work that I'm assumptions, right? They know the work that you do. They, they know that you're attached to sip and scroll. You know that you're attached to the tree lighting. And um, to the point where people are coming to you, you, not you, but the, the body, with ideas for other things to do that you almost have to like pick and choose amongst these ideas. And can you speak a little to that? Because I think there are some districts that, that similarly will be taken over by an, or have all volunteer, and how can they work with local culture council to elevate their presence a little more? So some of that is a little bit of luck of geography. We're a very centralized area, so uh, it's, it's natural that we get some of that. But uh, one thing we did that was great in the last year is we took some of our funding from the Massachusetts Cultural Council and paid to have a nice new logo um, that was stylized and just really put some thought into the color scheme, um, put some thought into the graphics that highlight elements of the town's geography and history into it, um, and then put that out there and even put it onto merchandising. So we have t-shirts with the Maynard Cultural District. Um, before we had the new logo, what we did is we had the two new murals that we put up and we put a lot of effort into those. We took some imagery of the hummingbirds or Babe Ruth that you may have saw on from the earlier mural, put those on a t-shirt with um, uh, that project's name, which is Maynard as a canvas, and we sold those. Um, doesn't generate a huge amount of revenue, but it really gets the brand out into the community. People love those t-shirts. They wear them out. I see them out and about um, and we're very excited about the ones with the new logo on it as well. Uh, we were working with the town to get that logo on a new sign as you come into one of the major entry points of town so that you'll see that, you know, welcome to the Maynard Cultural District. Um, and then it's really just making sure we're partnering with all our existing organizations for the great work that they're already doing and promoting those um, so that they're all 
connected so that you know our art space and the movie theater and the Maynard Business Alliance in the town uh, and Sanctuary and everything else is all working together, um, uh, at least to the extent that we can do that. So, yeah. I hope that answered your question. Yeah. Very good. The marketing and the branding of all districts, right? Um, so I have a question which I don't know if, I'm not going to talk about it, but I don't know if your cities are big enough to fit to find this, but about the mole and a common occurrence is that we fight with the other districts. That we're sort of doing this battle of who owns what, who's doing what. So we have the innovation district, we have the culture district, we have the historical district, we have the college district, and they're all vying for the same parcel of land because it's just one of the to go around. Uh, do any of you guys have any experience on how to? Uh, well, that's a wonderful question because I was going to ask about challenges. So here you go. I mean, you could invite them to be part of your partnership. <laughs> I, they are. Oh, they are. Right. Okay. They have to keep both interests in mind. So, like, a lot of that just gets used in something like, because hmm. my interests have been split in half, I want to balance this conversation to my interests. That shouldn't be, right? Your interests are, if you're all on the same parcel of land, then your interests are valid and your opinions are like you, you have to, you have to knock that negative language right out and call it out when you see it and just say, you know, we're, we're all working to improve this community. Um, and so I, I think you just, if you're in those meetings and it's, it's a bit of personal touch of being able just to say, actually, we really value your opinion, even if you're not going to be part of this project, we want to keep you appraised of it. We want to know what your thoughts are and we want to work in concert with you. Uh, but, but I mean more like a lot of them are city employees, so they're required by law to recuse themselves because they're part of two commissions doing the same thing or two committees in this case doing the same thing. Um, so like a historic district where we're kind of a mural, they're trying to preserve the building, right. but also trying to get the mural on the building. Oh, yeah. So they just kind of have to say, <laughs> sorry, I will, I will be fine with whatever answer comes out of this, but I can't be the one to lead the conversation. So I guess maybe because I work for the town, I, I get to lead those conversations. And for me, um, I really want to know and understand, so I ask a lot of questions. I do. It can drive people bonkers. But um, so, for example, one of the pieces that I was even speaking with someone about earlier, if you pull into Rockport, as soon as you pull up on the left-hand side, there's this beautiful amphitheater or it could be a beautiful amphitheater. And the DPW and I <laughs> actually had a little heart to heart because they are, they're doing a, a streets project that was redoing the sidewalk, but they weren't taking into consideration, well, that was an that's an amphitheater where we can do outdoor programming with poets and musicians, and that is who we are. So similar to what he was saying is driving the conversation so that everyone is educated so that we can all come to, to a viable. I understand what the DPW is trying to do. I understand where they were headed, um, and it's taking the time to communicate with them and make sure that you're sharing um, what, what the goals are. Yeah, I, I, I think to, to build on that a little bit, I mean, in Arlington, of course the district is distinct and it's, it is where it is, but there, and there was a lot of communication that had to happen when we were designated about what a district is in the eyes of the Mass Cultural Council. And so at first there was, I think, this perception, oh, well, the district is the district and we're outside of the district, so we don't mm -hmm. count, you know, or, or we're outside, of, we're f not in that part of town, so they don't care about us. And, but what we, the message that we tried to convey is the whole rising tide thing of like, okay, well, we're, we're interested in bringing visitors to Arlington and you're interested in your business getting more traffic and so you know this idea of the district kind of elevating the whole town and how you don't have to be in the district to benefit from the fact that your town has a district so I think just you know and it, it doesn't go quite to your point of, of the, the competing districts but um, I think it goes to the idea of what a district is in spirit and what it's supposed to really honor about the town and, and if I'm remember, remembering correctly, you guys actually have, I sat in a discussion the other day, ECCF, they just presented. Yep. So, so yes, yeah, so, ima so there's quite a few contenders. Um, and so part of my role with the town is, is how can I bring everyone together to the same table? And it always takes 
it always takes one person being willing to have those conversations that are, aren't always um, easy. Um, but then we also have to be willing to step aside and say, okay, this is what I wanted, but why? All right. I just, I just wanted to make a quick plug for collaborative projects that bring in a lot of different groups. I think that we're from, I'm from a tiny community. It's also, um, you know, has to depend on that because we also have a very limited volunteer pool. So you have to be like, okay, can this serve like five purposes? You know, can it be historical? Can it be educational? Can it be arts? Mm -hmm. And can it be, you know, the gardening club is also really happy or something, you know, and mm -hmm. then you bring all of those. And I don't know if that can be a direction that And I think that's true with the, and when you were talking about the boundaries of the cultural district, people feel that they're not a part of it or um, how come I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm just on the outside of it. And it's really about, not about those boundaries. It's just about having something be walkable, but it doesn't mean you can't be a part of it. And I do think it's about having conversations with people and having, you know, you know, making sure that everyone does feel included and making sure that maybe there might be historical might have a problem with, you know, cultural or whatever, but really you are all on the same page. And maybe there's a space where they don't necessarily have to rec recuse themselves because there is a way to, to activate that space historically and honor that, but as well as bring artists in who may be able to understand that and create something that benefits everybody. So I think the, so we talk a lot of, so we've talked a lot about, um, you know, collaborations, partnerships, branding, marketing, sustainability of a, a cultural district. And, you know, every, you know, every district is different, but I think that some of the things that you all have both, uh, that you all have um, presented to the group today have been really helpful. So we are going to have to end it here because we have a special surprise for dessert. I can't say, I don't know. I mean, I think Luis already said it in the agenda, <laughs> agenda but, um, but we want to get to that and we want to be able to get you guys home um, on the road before lots of traffic. But thank you so much. Thank the panelists here. We're all still here to chat and have, you have questions of them or each other, but share with each other, connect with each other because that's the way that you can learn and see what's working and what isn't working. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much.